So I was going to talk about animals this the, the, for this because I, I it's really interesting that um, you know when you work CRM you run into a lot of wildlife um, and and it, it, the many many times I've, I've I've been bitten by a snake twice while working in the swamps. Uh, one time it was uh, my my own fault. Uh, I was working with this guy in a in, it's in, in the middle of South Carolina actually and. And there was this really beautiful uh, king snake, and it was it was just crawled across the ground. And this guy was from from South Florida, and he 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 thought it was a coral snake. And I, I we were in South Carolina; there aren't any coral snakes there. But he was he was like, get away! Oh my God, get away from that snake! And I grabbed it. I just grabbed it up, and that thing bit me right on the hand. Just immediately, just bit me. And he was freaking out. I'm like, dude, it's 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 a gar you know, it's a king snake. It's it's not it's not poisonous. Uh, you know, it, it it didn't really hurt me that bad. <laughs> and I laughed about it. And that's the the only time I I freaked people out with snakes. I I'll pick up a snake just as you know quick. I've 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 dug up quite a few too. And I I, I once sat on a rattlesnake, and that was not not fun. And that was before I did CRM. <laughs> That was when I was, you know, about 16. Uh, but back to CRM, I, I was working at Camp Lejeune, and I remember it was it was around Christmas, and, and it's warm down. It's warm down on the coast of North Carolina, even during the winter time. And uh, we're we're working, and and, and there was this uh, little bush, and it had it had two green snakes. And I don't know if you've ever seen a green snake. It's it's a green snake. They they can't really bite you. They're 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 not. They're made. To, they they eat insects, and they're 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 not big snakes. But I um I was I grabbed one in each hand, and I was carrying the snakes around. And uh, we had a guy who who had went to uh, uh, a university in New York City, and he had never been on a uh, on a dig. Before. I mean, out he had been he had been in a field school, but he had done a field school right outside New York. And he had never really been in the wilderness before, and it showed. It really showed that he had, he 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 couldn't believe some of the places we were going. And I walk over, and it was lunch. And I walk over where everybody's sitting, and I, I was holding these snakes. I was like, well, look, look at these snakes. And he freaked. Oh my God, he freaked out. He thought I was. He didn't know what they were. He thought I was going to die. And I was like, oh man, dude, that. They're just, they're just green snakes. They, it, there's no harm in you know even picking them up. They're 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 green snakes are literally tame, and and so I, I put them back where I found them, um, and I guess you know that's this was 20 25 years ago, um, no 25 20 years ago. This was right when I first started working at CRM, and I, I was told by the uh, the field director, don't 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 pick up any more snakes, please, <laughs> please just leave. And I did. I mean, that guy, he lasted about three more days. We went through uh, through one of the swamps uh, on Lejeune, and he was like, "I, you're 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 we're wading through the water." And I'm like, "Yeah, we wade through the water all the time. It's you know, it's a swamp. We have to wade to the to the land for him. He's like, it's right over there." He's like, "No, I'm not. I'm not doing that." And I'm, I'm like, "Well, we did." Tell the field director you're not doing it, and uh, he didn't come back after that. He he, he left, um, and that happens. And I, I guarantee he never did CRM again. He, it, it just was not for him, unless he was just doing something. In the, and, and a lot of times you see these guys they they come out to the field and they they're like I I, I don't want to do that. I'm gonna I'm going to get my master's degree. I'm I'm gone. I'll 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 I'll, I'll sit back in the the you know, the office somewhere and, and work. And you never see them. You know, they never come back and you never see them in the field again. Um, and that was interesting. I have things, animals that I've been attacked by in the field. Uh, lots of insects. I, I, I once, uh, I was working at uh, Fort Stewart and I, we were uh, cutting through to uh, basic, well, we were pushing through and I, I was pushing uh, through some trees, through some trees. And I, I pushed my hand up into this tree and I, around, and I felt something crawling on my hand. I jerked it back, and I had stuck my hand in a hornet's nest. Oh my god! I ran so fast, and and everybody. I mean, they said that they they could see there was a line of hornets, and they were stinging. 
I mean, they had stung me horribly. Uh, I get back and get, get in the truck, and I sit there for a while, and I, I was sick because I'd been stung, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 times. So I was, if, if you get stung, I, 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 years later, I was I became a beekeeper, and I've, I've kept bees for years. And it, it, getting stung by, you know, a honeybee is, is quite a bit different than a hornet. Uh, when you get stung by 15 or 20 honeybees, you get high. It's it's really like a little. You get a little high. You, you forget about the pain. You, you feel really good. It's not the same with hornets. You feel like shit. Hornet venom is a is it's something not good for you. So, I was pretty much out of it for the rest of that day. Um, uh, they one time I camp not camp Legion, but Fort Stewart, and I have a picture of it. And I'm out. I may share the picture sometime of. This pig that bit me. It was funny. I know. Uh, we were uh, we were going down this this old logging road, and uh, there was this this wild boar, and it was standing on the side of the road. And, and the guy I worked with, he he was hilarious. He's like, "Oh my God, you you've you've, you've got to you got to go, you got to go. This this wild boar is sitting here, on, it's standing on the side of the road." And I was like, "No, that's that that boar is it's just fine. It's not doing anything. I want to look at it. I want to get closer to it." So I I was driving. I drove up closer to it. It stood there and looked at us, and I looked at it. And so I'm like, Tom, and Tom was the guy I was working with, and I, I worked with him a lot. I said, Tom, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the door. I want to see what this boy will do. I thought it would run away. I, I literally thought it was gonna run away. So I opened the door, and it sort of edged closer to us. So I stuck my boot out the door, uh, out the bottom of the door, and, and I had steel toe boots on, so I wasn't too, too frightened to do it. And it ran over and clamped down right on the end of the steel toe boot. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And and I, I finally kicked it off, and I, I shut the door. It was, <laughs> I, I have to say, it was it was one of the funniest things. That, that Tom was just freaking out. He's like, oh, my God, we're going to get out of here. It's going to kill us. I was like, no, no, it's, it's outside. We're fine. And I, I took I took quite a few pictures of it. it I've got pictures. Um Another day, and and we didn't. I didn't have a camera this day. This was back. You know, we didn't have cell phones like we have now, that have cameras in them. And this was back a while, while ago. And we were driving. It's Fort Stewart is is set up into different countries. Um, there's there's a place in Fort Stewart that is Iraq, and I helped build the. I, I did the survey for the Iraq. Um, there's a place that's uh, Bosnia. There's a Croatia, you know, Bosnia, Croatia. There's, uh, you know, all these different countries, and, and they build buildings in these countries, and they and they they uh, basically change the landscape so it looks like, and, and they even plant the plants that are in those countries. So there's one place in, on Fort Stewart. It's huge. It Fort Stewart is five counties in Georgia. It's it's the size of five counties, so it's it's huge. And this one place is it's about the size of a county, and they have basically turned it into Africa. It even has the trees that you would find in Africa. Um, because it four sorts warm, and it's warm all year round, the trees don't really die. I mean, we, there's palm trees on the base and everything. Uh, but uh, they, they've, they've basically terraformed this entire region to look like Africa. And so Tom and I are driving through Africa, and, uh, and Tom's... Tom, Never drove. I, I drove everywhere. We're driving along, and, and there's this big. I, I think they call bal, balboa trees. I can't remember. That it's, it's an African tree, and it's it's over here beside us. And I, I drive by. I drive up to it. And I stop, and I say, Tom, I don't know if I'm hallucinating. Can you look over under that? Can you look over to that tree and look under it and and tell me what you see? He's like, God, there's a there's a lion sitting under that tree, and I look over it. Sure enough, there's a there's a lion. It, it's it's not really a lion. It, what it was was a yellow mountain lion. It, it was a mountain lion. It was sitting under this tree, and it was like, and it's twitching its tail back and forth and looking at us. And I'm like, there's a mountain lion sitting beside this tree. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen a mountain lion before. I'm gonna live in mountains of North Carolina my entire life. I've never seen it. You know, a panther of any kind, and, it, and it, there's one sitting there. I'm like, that's amazing, Tom. And and our our field 
cameras were in the back of the truck. And I'm like, we can't get out. I, I, I want to take a picture of this thing. I, I want to take a picture badly. And I'm like, oh, the film camera's at the back of the truck. And we couldn't, we couldn't get out. I, I didn't want to get out. I was, I was a little bit, I, unlike the pig, the pig, I mean, I'm, in fact, the pig was probably more dangerous than the panther. Um, it was, it, we, I didn't go and do anything about that. It, it's interesting, though. And when, when that was just something we, we saw. Um, I, I think we've seen, I've seen almost every animal you can see on the East Coast. Um, I wonder, one, one my, the guy I was working with, Tom, he, he, he swears up and down he saw a monkey at, on Fort Stewart. I don't doubt it. Um, we're not, Fort Stewart's not very far from Florida, and they, they do have a, a monkey population, uh, you know, escape monkey population in Florida. So I don't doubt there's there's a couple on Fort Stewart. I mean, it's very, very uh, isolated. Uh, I, one day I was, I was on top of this berm. And down in the bottom, well, there, there are these holes that these berms have been dug out uh, for the military to train in. And in the bottom of these things, it fills up with water. And, and gators, alligators, uh, use these things. Because those, when they flood, fish get in these things. And, and there, are, there are lots of fish in the bottom of these, uh, you know, these borrow, what they call the borrow pits. So I'm standing on top of the, the berm from the borrow pit. And there's a there's about a ten foot gator at the bottom of this hill, but it can't get up to me because the the hill is sandy, so it's it's standing and I'm and it wouldn't do it wouldn't come after me in the in the daytime anyway. Gators are not like that, but, but I being a, a little a bit of an asshole at the time, I was throwing a, I throwing little twigs at it to see it it'll open its mouth and be like ah, ah. and. I, little does Tom know that I'm doing this, and where it's lunchtime, I'm goofing off. And he comes up behind me, and he thinks he's going to be funny and push me down the hill. He doesn't know that on the other side of the hill is this big ten foot gator. So he comes up behind me, and he just wham and pushes me right down into the sand. And I'm like, oh my god! And I'm like going down this hill, and there's a gator right down below me. It's, I mean, and I. We both, and then he saw what he what it was. He was freaking out. We were both freaking out. And I, uh, I never got within five feet of the gator. I was back up the hill, even as as you know bad as the sand was. I was right back up the hill. But one of the things about CRM, you can really. I mean, there are so many dangerous situations. I'm surprised more tanks haven't died. I've I have waded through swamps with gators swimming beside me. Uh, I would never do it again. Never. I mean, I, I did it that day. Jesus Christ. I would never. I don't know what I was freaking thinking at that point. I it's like, we've got to get over there to that landform. Let's just, let's just wait across here. Let's just wait. Let, well, I, I know there's a gator right over there. Let's, it's the middle of the day. They don't attack people in the middle of the day. Just, just, let's just wait across. And I did it. Oh, oh. My misspent youth, I was insane back then. I, I, I wouldn't do it now. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> but some of you probably would. I mean, if you're doing cultural resource management, you'd be like, oh, I'll, I'll do it. But uh, no. Um, and, I, and I've run. I thought I was going to talk about five minutes, but it's, it's been, it looks like it's been 20 minutes of me talking. Um, I, you know, I don't, don't even know where the time went. I haven't even told half the, the animal stories that I tell. One time I was, I'll, I'll tell one last animal story. Uh, we were doing walkover survey at the uh, airfield at Fort Stewart. And I was with, uh, not with Tom that day, I, I was with Brian, who was the, uh, he, he's the staff, he, he's the, uh, the chief archaeologist on base now. He used to be one of the techs with us back then. Uh, and he was behind me, and we don't have our shovels or anything. We're just doing a walkover. We're just checking, you know, seeing if, there, if we see anything. So we're walking along, and, and we're, we're walking down to the creek that's beside the airfield, and I step on a water moccasin, and it's it's just sitting there right next to the creek, and I, and I, and I feel it, and I feel it move when I step on it. So I, I freeze. I completely freeze. And Brian is standing behind me, and I, and I had stopped. He's like, "Why? Why are you stopping? What? What's wrong? What's wrong?" And, and he doesn't see it, and, and I'm, I, I dare not speak because <laughs> the the water moccasin, is, its head is popped up a little bit, and it's it's looking around. It's looking around. It thinks maybe a stick or something has fallen on its back because I, 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 you know, 
I'm not moving. I'm not moving at all. Uh, so it's looking around, and then Brian finally sees it because I haven't. I won't move. I, I won't even speak. He he starts freaking out behind me, and, and I'm like, oh my god, this dude, he, this manga is going to head out, head for him if he doesn't shut up. He it, it didn't though. I, I he he finally backed off a little. He backed off, which was smart. Um, and I, I just let a little bit of pressure off its back, a little, because it was stuck under my boot, and I just let a little pressure, a little pressure, I let enough pressure off that it could squirm out from under my boot. It came out, it sort of didn't know what was going on, because it obviously didn't see me, and luckily I'm wearing snake boots that are, you know, up to my knees. I was petrified I was going to be bitten that day, and if I was bitten that day, I was going to the hospital if it had got me anywhere beside the snake boot. Uh, but it, 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 you know, squirmed off back into the, into the creek, and I was like, shh, God my. I was like, well, let's call it a day. <laughs> let's, let's walk out of here and get it, get out of here, go have a drink or something. It, it, that was, and, and that reminds me, I'll, I'll talk about uh, alcohol and the archaeologist. If I ever make another one of these podcasts, I'll, I'll talk about arche, archaeology and, and alcohol. Uh, I have so many more animal stories to tell. I, I tell the story about the feral human we met, and I, my, my thought on what Bigfoot is because of having met this feral human. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't know how many people have met feral humans. Uh, we we met one in, at Fort Stewart, and I would not doubt we I've seen them before. Uh, but this this is this is a, a short thing about animals. I'm, it's longer than I thought it would go. And, and I have not even touched the surface on this. Uh, the, the many times doing field field work and you go into a cow pasture and a bull decides that you're not in the right place. <laughs> those oh, those are fun. But thanks for uh, watching, and we'll uh, I'll, we'll talk again sometime.